this as you see the way that we'll go through it about what it takes to be a leader, the things to emphasize with your athletes and for the athletes themselves what they need to own and kind of hold themselves accountable to. You'll see is a, whether they want to lead or not, it's really about good living, <laughs> um, great interactions, good relationships. You guys, as coaches, do a tremendous amount. Look, I told you I don't have a lot of coaching experience, but the, the little bit that I had was um, you know, with uh, fourth graders and third graders and fifth graders for football. I can't imagine how complicated at the high school level. Your sports are more difficult, their, their emotions are more difficult, the dynamics are more difficult, the drama is more difficult, the practice is more intense. And, oh, that's right, but you're all full-time coaches, right? This is what you do for a living. Right? You don't have jobs or families, right? No. If you have leaders that can help you out with any of this, even if it's just getting your clipboard, I imagine it's gonna help you with your sanity. So what does it say if an athlete can be on the field and they can really buy into your philosophy and be another voice for you? I imagine that it'll just multiply your effect as well as decrease your stress. So leadership must be taught. Where do our kids get the opportunity to learn that? I don't see any classes um, where it's done. And when they talk about how sport is a place for character development or leadership or to develop this or that or the other thing. Sport is just an opportunity. Anybody see bad sporting examples, bad sporting experiences, trauma happen in sport, right? There's nothing in sport itself that makes it a wonderful thing. It's up to us, coaches, parents, to, to make it and teach those things. So if we want sport to be a leadership developing thing, we gotta do something about it. Depending on your team, depending on what you're dealing with, we'll kind of look at the pros and cons of all of these. Anything is an option, but at least you can kind of go into it in a more educated way about, well, what's the best way to do it? So you could pick, and that's actually a, a relatively common one. The pros are you're in control. Who likes control, <laughs> right? I mean, you get your team, you kind of know who you want to be a leader. But the cons are, well, maybe you pick somebody that they're not crazy about. Um, maybe, uh, they're not respected, maybe they're, um, quite honestly, maybe you end up being wrong. I mean, I don't know how, how often you know the people ahead of time if you kind of pick it out. You could say, okay, look, it's your team, you, you know, you're on the field, who do you go along as leaders? What are the pros to that? Yeah, then you're doing the opposite. You were saying, look, I really value what you say. You're giving them some ownership. But what happens? <laughs> what are the negatives possibly? You got no control. Who's good about giving up all their control? Nobody? You can probably guess, but this third one is really my, my favorite of what we kind of see. You know, where the athletes will nominate, maybe say, okay, who are your top three leaders? You know, who, who do you guys want as captains? Or if you need more than, if you're gonna select on three, maybe you pick nine. Uh, what are the reasons? You can get creative. Um, you know, give them a checklist of, of traits. Um, maybe take some of the things that we have from here. Who's the best at maybe the different things that we will be discussing in a little bit. So you can guide it in a little way, but you solicit from them. But then ultimately the last decision is, is made up to you.